Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to take our wooden floor material from the previous video and add in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches to give our floor a more realistic, lived-in feel. Before we get started though, let's take a look at the textures we'll need for this video. We're going to need uh, floor smudges type A medium 001 and also gun scratches 003, both of which I already have saved to my hard drive and I'll include a link to them below the video. Okay, let's head over to Unreal. Okay, so this is the scene as we left it last time. Um, if you'll remember, we brought in our wooden floor textures and then set up a, a basic material here in the uh, node editor. We added in uh, some texture coordinate controls to allow us to control the scaling and also a little parameter for adjusting the impact that the gloss map has on our finished material. Now, what we're going to do today is actually work in that area. Um, by adding in some smudges and then later on we'll work on the normal map for adding in some scratches. But first we're going to need to bring in the additional textures that we'll be using. So I'm going to jump back to my textures folder here and hit import and let's find our files. So we need floor smudges type A medium, there we go and it's the white smudges on a black background that we'll be using. So let's bring that in. Then double click on it and like before, because this does not contribute towards color, um, we don't want it to be uh, affected by any gamma corrections. So we turn off sRGB um, and that means we're, we're getting the, the raw data from that texture. Um, okay, hit import again. And this time we need gun scratches O3. And in this case, it's the normal map that we want. And when we hit open here, you'll get a little message saying that it's been identified as a normal map again. That's good. Go into it again though. And if you remember with our normal maps, we have to invert the green channel. So just type in green into that little top box there and then click on flip green channel. Okay, so that's our, that's our two uh, imperfection textures loaded. So now we can go back to our materials folder and load up our material. The first thing we're going to do is bring in a new texture parameter 2D and we shall name this smudges because that's what it's going to be. And, and then under the texture here we'll just find our smudges. There they are. And now we have our input all good to go. Um, now, the, what we need to do, obviously, is find a good way of taking this smudges texture and overlaying it on top of our gloss map, or well, technically our roughness map, because if you remember, we put in an invert node here, which turns the gloss texture into a roughness map, which is the type of input that Unreal wants. So, the best method for this is a screen mix. Now. If you've used uh, other art packages in the past, like say Photoshop or or any numerous 3D renderers, uh, screen's quite a quite a common mix type. And what it allows you to do is take the bright areas of a map and overlay them on top of another map. Okay. Now, thankfully, we have a blend screen node, which is good. So let's feed our roughness map into the top input and our smudges map into the bottom. And then the result will be the combination of those two. In fact, if I just feed that into the base color for a second so we can see it on here, um, you can now see we've got our roughness map, but also got the, the smudges overlaid on top, which is exactly what we want. So that is good. And then we'll just feed that into the roughness and reconnect up the color. There we go. So that, that's our smudges in place. Um, we lack control though at this point, because if you catch it in the light at the top there, you'll see that's, that's a lot of smudges <laughs> uh, and they're also quite small. So we, we need a way to adjust the scaling but also adjust the strength of this effect. Um, so we'll do the strength first because that's nice and easy. Um, it's basically just going to be a duplicate of these two nodes. So I'm just going to control C, control V um, and now we've got another multiply and parameter node. So if I feed the smudges into the A input of the multiply and then the output into the base instead, this parameter now becomes our control for the for the smudges. So let's give that a different name. We'll call it smudges adjust. There we go. And then you've got the uh, the 
controls here um, that we set up last time. Um, I'm going to lower the default value to about 0.5. That should be quite a nice sort of subtle effect now. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that should work for us. So now we need a way to control the the scaling of these smudges. Um, and what we're going to do, so you, you might think the best option would be to copy all of those and duplicate it down and, and just add in another set of texture coordinates. But then whenever you make an adjustment to the scaling of the floor, you'll then have to rescale the smudges. What we want is for the smudges to adjust compared to the floor or as in sync with the floor. I don't know how you better word it, but yeah, <laughs> that's, uh, that's what we're going to do. So I'm actually just going to duplicate these two nodes. Okay, and then drag those down to about here, and I'm going to feed the output from this multiply into the A slot of this multiply, and then feed that into the UV of the smudges. So now it will take into account whatever scaling we do with the floor as a whole, and allow us to adjust it from here, or well, adjust the smudges from here. So I'll call this smudges scale. No go. Now we want these smudges to be quite a bit bigger than they are at the moment. That's, that's the If you imagine those little marks are like footprints, if you compare that with the the size of the floor tiles, um, they're pretty big. Sorry, pretty small. Um, so first of all, I'm just going to uh, enlarge our floor panels a little bit so we can get a better look at what we're doing. Ooh. Yeah. And then the smudges, let's change that to about a value of 0.65 or so. Yeah, that's more like it. If you look at the smudges now, it, it, they, they look like sort of footprint size compared to the floorboards, which is exactly what we want. And if we now scale the floor back up to where it was, the smudges stay relative to that size. Yeah, so that, that's why we've done it this way. And uh, yeah. Yeah, that works pretty well. Okay, so that's our smudges done, nice and easy. Um, the next step is to add in some scratches. So underneath here, I'm going to right mouse button and then type texture again and bring in yet another uh, parameter 2D texture node thing. <laughs> uh, and we'll call this one scratches. There we go. And Funnily enough, it'll be the scratches texture that goes in there. But we've got a normal map. Now, with a normal map, you can't use these kind of blends to uh, to mix them together. That would just that just completely wouldn't work. What we instead need is a um, that there's a specific node for it called blend angle corrected normals. That's the one. Blend angle corrected normals. Now we can feed the first. Uh, normal map, the original normal map, which we still want to retain, we still need that detail, um, and add the scratches to it, and that's what this node does. But let me just show you what I mean, if we were to plug in the scratches into the normal map, we would start to see, I would hope anyway, yeah, see on the, uh, on the corner here, we, we, we can see our scratches, but we've now lost our normal information from our original texture sample. So. By using this blend node, we retain both. We get our scratches and the normal information from the original texture, which is good. Now, we have two problems with the scratches. The strength of them and the scale of them, same as we did with the smudges. Now, the to affect the scale is nice and easy. That's exactly like we did before. So I'm just going to duplicate these nodes again and drag them down here. Take the input from the original floor multiply up here and put that into the A input there, and then put the output into the UVs, and rename this uh, Scratches Scale. There we go. Um, and that, that's the scaling fix now. All we need to do is uh, change the default values a little bit. So let's try um, about a value of five, and we'll make the slider one to 10. And that should be some relatively tiny little scratches, which I'm not really seeing, if I'm honest, which is a bit disconcerting. Hello? 
Yeah, I would have thought we'd, uh, we'd see those a bit stronger. What I'll do for now then is make them ridiculously big, just so we can keep an eye on them. Um, and we'll adjust that effect as we go. Because you only really see them as the light catches, you see? So when they're getting a bit small, it's hard to make out in this preview. Um, but we will be adjusting that as we go. Now, as for the strength, that is a little bit more complicated. What we essentially have to do is break up the channels so we can multiply some of the channels within the normal map before we then feed it into this blend angle, okay? A bit confusing, I know. So let's start off with a parameter. We'll get another scalar parameter and we'll name this Scratches. Oop, I just broke it somehow. Scratches adjust. Now we'll set the default value at 1, the min value at say uh, 0.5 and the max value at 2. We'll probably want to adjust those slightly but uh, that's a, as good a place as any to start. Now what we're going to do is bring in two multiply nodes. Now bear with me here because it's uh, it'll only make sense when they're all together I think. Like so. And then we're going to bring two append vector nodes. And what the append nodes will do is bring our channels back together when we're finished with them. So we're going to feed the red channel into the A slot of multiply of this first multiply, the green into the A slot of this second multiply, then feed the red and the green into this first append, and then feed that into the second append, <laughs> and then the blue channel into the B slot of that second append. So once the channels have gone through these nodes, this final node will be the combined normal map again. It'll be just like feeding the the output from here. So that, that's actually what we'll put into this additional normal map. But what this will allow us to do now is connect up the parameters to these multiply nodes so we can multiply the red and green channels, which is what we need to to control the strength. And I'll demonstrate now. So we, we can see these scratches on the on the little preview model here. If I turn this value to zero, the scratches will disappear. If I turn it to five, the scratches should become quite ridiculous. Yeah, so that's working good. Um, now we've got it turned up insanely high, let's uh, let's adjust our scale default here. Now I, I still think a value of five is about what we'll be after. Yeah. I think that'll look pretty good. And then we just need to turn the default value of the strength down to something like two. And I'll make the, the choices between say 0.5 and 4. That should work pretty well. And that's it. That's our somewhat complicated looking material. <laughs> um, all done. Now I'm going to show you, uh, before we finish up, exactly why we bothered with all these parameter values rather than just typing it directly into the nodes. If I save this material, there we go, um, and I'm going to clear this material from the floor, and I'm going to right mouse button on material and then create a material instance, and then I'm going to apply that to the floor instead. Now, if we now have a little look around our scene, we should see all our work. You can see the, the subtle scratches are in there nicely. Um, the reflections are looking good. The smudges aren't really showing up particularly well. So we should probably increase the strength of that a little bit. Um, and this is why the instances are so good, because if you double click on that, you get a nice big preview like this. And all those values that we brought in that we created and now sitting here for, for for us to adjust. Now I was happy with the, the scaling I think, so it's just the, the strength. I'm going to up the roughness a little bit to 0.8, uh, the smudges strength to about 0.8 as well, um, and the scratches, I think they were okay as they are to be honest. Scratches adjust, let's, let's try free at that. Okay. So now I can come out of that, and these, those changes apply instantly. See, now we can see the smudges are a little clearer, the scratches are showing nicely, and uh, yeah. That, and because we're using instances, we can create several instances of this for different levels of effect in different parts of our, our, our scene, um, and it's a, it's a really good way of doing stuff. But yeah, 
I would say that we're, we're, we're done. So in summary, we've taken our original wooden floor material and added in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches, to give our floor a more realistic lived-in feel.